All right, folks, thank you to me for that message. I'm Tom Downey. Alongside me is Harris Rubenstein here. Again, follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney. He's on Twitter at Sportstein. Let's talk now about the Lakers, and a lot of this does still focus around Kawhi Leonard. Now, there were the, the conflicting reports about whether or not Kawhi prefers the Clippers over LA or over, over the Lakers, excuse me. I still believe through and through Kawhi wants to go to the Lakers. And that's our does. first rumor here. Like, I don't believe the Shams or the Stephen A. Smith reports that the, the, the report was that, and it's so strange to me that now that LeBron is in LA, the idea of going head to head with with LeBron is something that he he doesn't want to do. That makes sense to me. The, the idea that he wants to go up against LeBron doesn't make sense to me. The, the Shams report was that he doesn't think, they didn't think LeBron, that Kawhi, that Kawhi is jumping for joy. If anything, it makes him go more towards the Clippers because he doesn't think that he's amped up and wants to join LeBron. Why wouldn't you want to join the best player in the NBA when you're a good fit with him? Kawhi can work off ball. We've seen him work off this, ball. This I know doesn't in, make sense in sports. You know, what, sources are a very important thing, and when your sources get outed in a way, you kind of kind of start to expose and kind of show where the message is coming from. That report that Shams has is one million percent coming from Kawhi's uncle. There is no way that an NBA agent would actively tell a reporter, "My client doesn't want to play with LeBron James." No one is that stupid. I think this is coming from Kawhi's uncle, who wants Kawhi. To go to the, he wants him to go to LA and be the number one star in an LA franchise. That's what he's always wanted. And I think when we saw you know LeBron go to the Lakers, all of a sudden everything Sham started to report about Kawhi was that Kawhi didn't want to go to the Lakers. That's very interesting. It just it it, it makes no sense. And I fully one hundred percent believe that Sham's source throughout this entire time has been Kawhi's uncle and Woj is coming from Kawhi's agent and. Look, regardless of who you think has the correct information towards Kawhi or his agent and this and that, one thing is very clear. This entire situation is a complete crap show, and we do not know at this time 100% what Kawhi Leonard wants, and that's why so many teams are not open to giving up these big trade packages for him because we are getting so many different messages, Agreed. and it's a big, big-time problem. I know his uncle is trying to help. I know how much his group cares, but they have muddled this situation so much more than it needed to be. All right, let us know in the comment section who you'd, you guys would rather play for. Comment now coming in via Super Chat from Brett Robbins. Brett, thank you very much for the Super Chat. He says, if we think the resigning of Derek Favors was the better move than pursuing Jabari Parker for the Jazz. Jabari I Parker so is the better first. player than Derek Favors. However, if you're the Utah Jazz with the amount of success that you had last season with this group, I think it is totally okay that they brought back Derek Favors. I am always in favor of keeping a group together when they have good chemistry and the coaching is working. As of right now, both of those things are true. The coaching is working for the Jazz, and the team has great chemistry overall. I don't know if you need to throw in a wrench like Jabari Parker into that plan for a guy who we saw struggle on defense last year, was very streaky in terms of his overall scoring. They, the Jazz basically comes down to this. They know what they're getting in favors. They know how much they can pay him, and they know what his fit is on, with, uh, on this team or what his fit is with this team. That is all they needed. I thought Favor signed a relatively team-friendly contract to re-sign only two years. I think Jabari might have asked more because he is a restricted free agent. So in the end, I do think it was the right move was. for Utah. And I still like Derek Favors quite a bit as a player. And again, I like Jabari Parker. I think it's terrible what's happened to him this offseason, but good move all around. We'll keep it rolling now here. Next up, are Lakers not making big offers for Kawhi, which this makes so much sense because why would they? The, the Lakers at this point are barely even okay with giving up Brandon Ingham for Kawhi Leonard, let alone giving up any sort of massive trade package. That's why my realistic trade offers for Kawhi Leonard seem so low, because why would the Lakers offer anything more than one young player and maybe one or two first-round picks? There's no reason for them to take that risk at this time, especially with all the other free agency moves that they've made so far. It doesn't make any sense at all for the Lakers to go out of their way to give some crazy offer, especially since we know that those Spurs don't want Lonzo Ball, and now the Lakers have completely taken off Kyle Kuzma off the boards, which we'll talk about here. Actually is our next rumor. Stephen A. Smith says Kyle Kuzma is off limits. They'll offer 
what they consider to be a fair package, but Kuzma will not be in it after good. a very, very good opening year. Then there's no reason why Kyle Kuzma should be in that offer. Now, I'm a, I'm slightly bit lower on Kyle Kuzma than I think the rest of the NBA is overall in terms of kind of where he is. I think he's a good player, but I think you can kind of track him month to month that, you know, he really only had about two to three really good months of basketball and the rest were pretty average. Now, he was a, you know, a first team all NBA, all rookie team this year. Great young player, but I think the Lakers are right in not trading him because you trade away Kuzma, you don't really have anyone to replace him. I mean, I know they drafted Mo Wagner, but he's not as good as Kyle Kuzma is right now, but that's why the Lakers want him with Brandon Ingram because Kawhi Leonard is just going to slot in right there on the wing at the small forward position, whereas for Kuzma, they don't have a natural I, replacement. I will make note here of Ingram versus, versus Kuzma debate here. Uh, Ingram is still two years younger than Kyle Kuzma, which is so weird to think about. But, but I think also the Lakers, when you get LeBron James, you're looking for a certifiable, like, real product. Kyle Kuzma, I think, right now is so much more of a real solid prospect, whereas Brandon Ingram, a little bit more of a growing potential guy. Next up, via DeMarcus Cousins, or I should say on to Marcus Cousins. The Lakers felt that they couldn't wait. That was the report from Mark Stein was that they're trying to win right now. They had to pass on signing him, which frankly, Harris, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I don't really get it. I, so the Lakers are trying to win now, but they won't make an overwhelming trade offer for Kawhi? I, look, I agree. I don't think but it makes a whole lot of sense. They, and they I think in reality, maybe what? maybe L.A. was more concerned about Boogie's contract than they're letting on otherwise. I, I think— do Or not contract, injury, excuse me. I think along with the injury, I think they are worried about bringing DeMarcus Cousins into that locker room, especially while he's not playing basketball. Why take that risk? Why bring DeMarcus Cousins with all of the issues he's had in locker rooms into a very young locker room that now features the alpha dog of the NBA in LeBron James? Is there really a universe where that doesn't end up being a huge problem? Now, I was a proponent of the Lakers signing Cousins. I still am. But I think overall, if you're looking what kept the Lakers away from Cousins, I think it was locker room. All right, folks, next up here. Hey, we're trying to get to 50K subscribers here. So subscribe now. We are just 123 Come away. On, people. That's it. We hit that number. That's it. We got NBA coverage, NFL, and so much more. We thank everyone who has already subscribed if you haven't already and you like the show. It's just going to be more of the same going forward. Guaranteed champagne shower, Harris Rubenstein, Lena Bond when we get to 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> Book it. That's producer it's going Lena, to happen. By the way. Come on. It's going to be great. Get us there. All right. Back to the Lakers then. We'll talk about Lonzo Ball. Does he need surgery? The report from Woj is that he might require surgery on that injured knee, but he is still looking at other options here. I am such a proponent of getting surgery sooner, sooner rather than later because we saw with Kyrie Irving what can happen if you wait too long for surgery. Something gets infected and boom, all of a sudden you're more injured than you were originally. They, I, I think if you're Lonzo Ball and you're the Lakers, you just got Rajon Rondo, go let Lonzo Ball get surgery on this knee, let them clean it up, get the meniscus figured out, and then not have this issue for the rest of the time that he's there. I hate it when teams take risks on surgeries. Just do it. Speaking of that injury here, there is the report, including Woj with some more speculation, that Lonzo leaked his injury to help Called prevent it. a trade. Called There's it. some around the Lakers that think that's the case here. Didn't want to get traded. Balls, balls camp leaked. Oh, he's got a, a bit of a knee injury, and the Lakers are not happy about it. 100%. This is a 100% fact. I, 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 am, I called this from the beginning. When he first got announced that he had a menisca, torn meniscus injury, I was like, that's weird. It was never reported that it was that serious before, and then all of a sudden it magically turns into a torn meniscus. I'm glad that I was right. They 100% leaked it to avoid him getting traded. 100%. We'll come back with what the Rondo signing means for Lonzo, but first, a very quick message. Thanks for watching, you guys, but I still can't believe some of you have not subscribed to the Chat Sports YouTube channel. What are you waiting for? It's so easy. The guys are going to give you 10 seconds to do so. So right below your screen, click that subscribe button, and the guys will be right back with all the latest NBA news and rumors you do not want to miss. And I'll see you later in the show. All right, there was the report from Woj that the addition of Lonzo, or Rondo was a message to Lonzo Ball to get going. I, I wonder how much it was a message to Lonzo individually as much as it was a message to, you know, the, the, the Triple B and Lonzo's group that like, hey, 
you know, stop messing around or we're going to bring someone in to replace you and we're not scared to do it. This is what happens when you bring in LeBron James. No more games, no more shenanigans, no more Laval Ball running his mouth. It is now time to put up or shut up or we are going to get another point guard. I like what the Lakers are doing here. While the Lakers continue to look for another superstar, I do think Lonzo is going to remain a, a large focal point of that, of that offense and that team. Maybe Giannis could come, right? Giannis? No, oh, no. No. Giannis threw, some, threw all of the water on that fire, says, my goal, to, my goal is to win in Milwaukee, bring a title. I would never leave for LA. Plus, he's not even afraid until 2021 the, the, anyway. And also, keep Giannis in Milwaukee. The best NBA story that we had last year was that Giannis was about to show up late to an NBA game. He was late to practice, and he was sprinting in the rain down the streets of Milwaukee to get the stadium. And someone pulled over and said, is that you, Giannis? And he's like, yeah, my car broke down. I can't get to the stadium. And they drove him to the arena Glorious while story. he was sprinting in the rain to a game. Keep him in Milwaukee. He's such a legend. All right, folks. I am Tom Downey. That is Harris Rubenstein. If you guys missed anything here on the show, don't worry. We'll loop it over. Harris and I will be in the comments section as well, responding to any comments and questions you guys got. And until then, we'll see you next time for more NBA coverage.